Welcome back to the Sunday Pulse. Uh, we're in, we are actually halfway done with the show. We just talked about GSL in Korea and everything with WCS Europe from the qualifiers to the NHL stream. Definitely check it on Bob, youtube.com slash NA Star League. Now, if you're just joining us and you're wondering about what are these numbers, what are these numbers down here? Chair, Dan. That's how I like it. Uh, there is, it's the point values that you guys are assigning this week in chat. The only way you can participate is if you have a Twitch TV account and you type into the chat, exclamation point, karma, the name as well as the point values. Now, I don't know how you guys have so many points uh, so fast because I think as soon as I said that, it was like 800 points were distributed immediately. But lots of people are having fun. Let us know your feedback. Tweet at NSL, at t uh, NSL TV or tweet at Frodan. Let me know how the system's working if you guys like it. Cool, so we're done with the WCS uh, EU and WCS Korea. Let's talk about WCS America with MLG. Happening as we speak is the MLG qualifiers for WCS America. MLG took a much more condensed version of their European counterpart as they hosted only one tournament where the top A qualify as opposed to ESL's four tournament top two qualifier. Thankfully, the tournament is double elimination. However, the tournament has been mired by the overwhelming number of Koreans and other tournament logistic issues. The list could go on for a while. We'll be covering NA a little bit more next week after the dust has settled and we know what groups have been picked. But I want to ask you guys, what are some of the storylines that you've been following in these qualifiers, whether it be about the tournament themselves or about the players? We'll start with, uh, with Ben. Five minutes. Storylines from the North American qualifier. My favorite one has to be the absence of North American players actually having any semblance of a hope at qualifying. Not a single non-Korean player made it through the winner's bracket. And if we go down to the loser's bracket, we can see that the only North American player left is Drunken Boy. He's got to play against Hart and uh, probably another Korean eventually. Uh, so... <laughs> It just doesn't look good for North American players. I, I, honestly, I am so disappointed in the way that WCS North America is shaping up. This is a tournament that I was very excited for because I love cheering for my favorite North American players. I want to cheer for Scarlet and for Idra and for Gosu User and for Vibe and for Cats and for all of these guys. Uh, but instead, we were fed, force-fed, by the way, some uh, some terrible region locks excuse me, non-region locked rules that, uh, that open the floodgates for an influx of Korean players who have crushed our North American hopes and given us no chance of cheering for a hometown hero. Well, there are some people invited, man. There are some people invited. We have that to look forward to. So at least in the round of 32, we'll get to cheer for some North Americans. Um, beyond that, we've had hackers playing openly in an event. That never happened with ESL, by the way, because they have a strict policy against hacking that catches you early and weeds you out long before you can ever get the chance to play in an important qualifier like something yeah. for WCS. ESL is also really strict with that. Like, even uh, there are guys who once upon a time when they were young, for instance, like cheated in a Counter-Strike match, two years later, don't even think that you can just play a StarCraft competition. You're still banned. Doesn't work that way, <laughs> man. So it's impressive. Man. Incredibly that. strict policy. That's why you didn't have that kind of a drama. Uh, you've had the issues that we have with the Chinese players, guys uh, like the WCS China champion not even allowed to participate in WCS North America or in WCS of any way because of administrative mistakes made by MLG and uh, honestly honestly at the end of the day the biggest gripe I I, I don't mean to be griping because you're asking me for storylines there's some great games being played the Muslims playing some great Starcraft I would love to see him qualify because he should have been invited in the first place but Benny. the biggest gripe I have hands down bar none is just the way this is presented this is the premier event in North America and what are we given? We're given no storylines. We're given no oh, production value. We got nice shots we got of traffic we in got, New York, we got, we got traffic in New York. That's one thing. And, and cloudy overcast? But there's nothing, man. Give me a profile on some of these players. Give me, uh, give me, uh, give me some outtakes. Give me something. Make me laugh. Entertain me. Do something. This is the premier event in all of North America. And, guys, this is the only event we're going to get in North America this year because okay. WCSNA is going to overshadow everything else. And nothing. It's been, it's, been, uh, it's been dominated by Koreans. It's been poorly administered. There's a single qualifier for 500 people, half of which that signed up weren't even in Diamond League. And uh, a lot of great players left out. And, of course, the presentation was lackluster at best. I've been incredibly disappointed with the WCS North America event. It's not MLG's fault. MLG does events wonderfully. But online broadcast, online tournaments it's just not their forte they've never been that good at it game battles is the closest thing MLG has to it and it's an automated online forum that allows you to challenge other teams to matches it's it's just it's just not there I'm I'm brutally disappointed and I feel like there were other people that could have done a better job yeah 
I think uh, all the B-roll and stuff or like the fun things in between games that you were referring to because now at the end of the day it's just like cast a game, all right, in commercial, cast a game, commercial, there's nothing else. It's mostly because I don't think they were even planning to cast this on forehand. I'm sure that uh, once the actual tournament starts, like the online group oh, stages... that's right, that's right. They were planning to cast everything from replays. That could never go badly. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> not the point. But that's uh, this is something else. That that's why I think they were not that well prepared. I think when the actual... Uh, group stages start like when they actually start doing the real tournament I think they will have a lot of cool stuff and all those things that you uh, ask for but that doesn't take away the fact that obviously those things that you pointed out in the qualifier it's really painful I think having only one quali qualifier is stupid for so many reasons for instance right now Katz lost against this guy who may or may not be a hacker he got disqualified after that so I guess he is but then like Katz's tournament is ruined that's his only and so shot. is everybody else that was in that guy's yeah. path same for Calm. Calm yeah. si signs up doesn't get yeah. in because why the WCS China a champion. We, we should clarify, by the way, like before we go too far into this, uh, and we'll, we're going to extend the clock because this is actually a pretty big topic. Uh, Calm is a Chinese player, is a WCS Chinese, Chinese champion from last year, and he signed up for the tournament, but he didn't get in. So, but one of his friends did, who's also a pro gamer in China, and he played under his idea ID the entire tournament. It was his games, his hockey, his replays. And he was open about it. And he was open he about said, it. He said, I am Calm. calm. Yeah. And, and I think he played said in English, through the entire played through the entire tournament. Played through the entire tournament. Eliminated a lot of people. Losers bracket round, round one nine. Round. round one round away from qualifying for WCS North America. One round away from proving, like he said in his post, that Chinese players are able to be competitive on the global stage. That was his goal when he set out, according to Com. And then they find then then some MLG yeah. admin catches wind of it and says, "Yeah, you're disqualified." Well, uh, it's it's against their rules and rules. It's against rules. their rules, and you yeah, have to uphold your rules. I get it, <laughs> but yeah. you just you just crushed the integrity of everybody that was in his path. Okay. The, the whole tournament is compromised. It, it sucks. Ben, you've been talking a lot. I, I, Kevin wants to say something. I really don't think that they had to disqualify Com. Like, for instance, he was there on time to qualify, then something went wrong with the admin. That's a really big mistake. A couple of amazing guys, for instance. What the hell, guys? Jim, Jim Credible. We all want to see <laughs> freaking Jim. This guy pretty much all killed Evil Genius alone, and now he doesn't even get a chance to play WCS. That was all horrible. But now focusing on this calm incident alone, he said from the very beginning that he was calm. I really don't see any point in disqualifying. How often don't we see Korean pros having like a silly nickname on North America? Like I actually can't bring up any examples right now. But how often have we cast two Koreans when we know who they are? They just use a different yeah. account. What like if calm just signed up? Like for instance, the Muslim is called Evil Geniuses in the bracket. He was called Fruit Basket. Well, if he wants to be called Fruit Basket, who cares? Like, I, I really don't think that there was any way to this, uh, any solid reason to disqualify him. Uh, sure, if you really want to follow the re the, uh, the rules, I believe some of the rules also say that if uh, results are spoiled, the players can get banned. Well, if that's the case, then you can now ban half the bracket, basically. Because yeah, anybody that's shared their results with a friend uh, is yeah. now... Uh, God, it's just the whole thing is a fiasco. 512-man bracket for the only single qualifier for North America. For time, one though. of the most populous regions in all of StarCraft II, not to mention the one that Koreans are all migrating to, that the Chinese are all migrating to, that the Taiwanese are all migrating to, that the Southeast Asians are all migrating to because you get less lag in North America than you do in Europe. This is a huge flop it's a huge flop so there, it sucks man the, you have you have you have cut so many people out of having any chance at participating in the only major north american event for the year it's it's just i am so i'm really upset about it a couple things as you can probably tell <laughs> and you got as the chat probably agrees as you got massive points on that again type in uh, yeah yay point points karma. yay points yes because that that'll <laughs> make ben feel a lot better about this qualifier uh, i do want to bring up a couple counterpoints though and i'm playing devil's advocate here MLG is on limited time because obviously they don't want to be doing WCS, EU, and NA simultaneously. Is this more uh, of, an, of a timetable that Blizzard gave to the organizer, I, organizers and MLG had to do what they had to do? Because obviously they would like to have multiple qualifiers. Is this so much on MLG or is this just kind of circumstance of the overarching WCS? I don't know who it's on, Dan, but <laughs> the fact remains if you just sit here and you say, uh, whatever, then nobody, there's, there's no reason for anyone to make a change. So people have got to get loud. People have got to get pissed off. People have got to say, this is not okay. These changes have to be made because otherwise it just continues. It's a cycle of, of, of crap, and you continue you know, crushing the chances of talented players. And I heard a little Stefano in there. This is quap. <laughs> you know, so the, the I mean, biggest point is I, I could be overzealous, and I'm sorry, yeah. Kevin. I don't mean to. I'm just a little steamed right now, and uh, I'm probably yelling too much, and I'm probably pissing off people that I shouldn't be pissing off. But somebody has got to stand up and say, guys, get your get your acts together and do it right next time. Otherwise, they it, can it's do not it. going to happen. 
They can do it. Because they can. MLG is one of the best organizations for esports in the world. They're, they're I, awesome. I completely agree. They do great events, but they have not done this qualifier correctly. Kev, do you have any last words about this uh, whole MLG thing? Maybe no, I pretty much, yourselves? obviously Ben has pretty much said it all. Uh, once more, I think the fact, like, it was obvious that some things were going to go wrong. There's nothing wrong about that because it's hard to host these kind of, or this the tournaments on this scale properly, certainly when it's the very first time. But the fact that it's only one qualifier is still the biggest flaw out of all of them. We have sort of a corrupted grid now where players who shouldn't have been eliminating people have been eliminating people. Uh, just one shot, a couple of people getting excluded, not having a single chance right now. These Chinese guys are so freaking good. If you read the post, it's actually really like sort of making you emotional. If you just imagine like uh, the way that they described it, they were all sitting there staying awake, all super ready to qualify. Like they've been training on NA server. Uh, they've been dominating as well, and then they don't even get the chance to play. Like yeah. if I was one of those players, that would be so extremely demotivating. Especially it's really after WCS finals like That's the kind of China. thing that yeah. ends careers, man. It is really saddening to think about. Like it almost like... You, you prepare for months or something like that, and then you just say, you know what? This, this isn't for me. I'm going to do something else. Like yeah. that's that's well, that kind of stuff happens, man, and it's just... I hope it doesn't happen for sure. Uh, it is, regardless of what happened... At least we know the Chinese can play. Yes, the Chinese can play. I really hope, yeah. like, and I know this is like <laughs> we're, unreasonable. We're not done, so make I it know, quicker. but like the last thing, I really hope that still somehow we are gonna get something in the Chinese scene. And I really don't care who is in charge of it or who hosts it, but those guys, they are freaking good. Like mm -hmm. Maxet and, and Jim, they are absolutely <laughs> dominating NA. They have the same stats as Bolt, and they are playing from China. Like. If you can even that doesn't make sense. I can't even emphasize on how bad that connection must be. This is, it's an absolute miracle. Dude has able to cast force off. field two seconds in advance. Those guys, they must be so freaking good if they can do that. And now we are still not able to see them at all. This is not just MLG's fault. I really hope that we get something in China, that there is going to be a premier StarCraft 2 league in China because we deserve it. I Those agree. players deserve it. And yeah. Yeah, the fans deserve it out there. And we need a good start. Well, that's Chinese the team. mandate of WCS to bring out local heroes. I completely agree. Regardless, mm -hmm. you guys should be paying attention to WCS. And there's still lots of great players, lots of great storylines. There are people invited to it. The qualifier broadcast will continue this week. For all information, head over to MajorLeagueGaming.com. Let's take a quick break and get ready for our next section where we're going to talk about things like DreamHack and news around StarCraft 2. You're watching the Sunday Pulse. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 